everyone, welcome to a new episode. Today we are going to explore daytime in GraphQL and we will be looking at the pitfalls you hit when dealing with daytime. Before I get started, we are running workshops at NDC Oslo, NDC Sydney and NDC Minnesota. So if you want to learn all about hot chocolates, strawberry shake, Maui or Relay Jazz, join us at the NDC conferences and let's have a fantastic two-day workshop. And with that, let's dive in. So in GraphQL, we have a community specification for a daytime scaler, which is based on the RFC 3339. And you can look at the specification at graphqlscalers.com. Okay, the date time spec outlines that, that all date times have to specify an offset. And that very well aligns with the daytime offset that we have in .NET. And that's why the hot chocolate daytime implementation is actually based on daytime offset. Let's have a look at some code to explore everyday usage of daytime in GraphQL. So this is a very simple GraphQL server. It has a single entity called node. Essentially a node that you can write. So we have a node text here and the date when we create that node. And we have two operations here, query, where I can essentially grab all the nodes or a specific node. And I also have mutation to create new nodes. So in order to understand a bit the problematic here, let's go into Banana Cake Pop and try everything out from the outside. So I just run my server here. Let's do dot and watch. Let's wait a second. Okay, there's my server. And then we can go over here to open up Banana Cake Pop. Okay, let's create a new tab. Let's have a look at the schema. So we can see that our node translated well. We have the body here, our text. We have the created field, which is our date time. And we have our ID field, which we are not really concerned about. Okay, let's query that. At the moment, we should not have anything in our database. So we can say get nodes. And then we could ask for all the nodes. And then let's create a fragment so I don't have to repeat all the fields for the nodes here. So I say fragment uh, node props on node. And we say we want the ID, the body, and the created. And we just use our fragment here. Okay, now let's query our nodes field. And then we see nothing is there actually what would I expect? Let's add something to our database. So we are going to write a mutation, create node. And uh, yeah, our mutation is called create node. And we want to reselect the data we have written into our mutation. So we take the same fragment here. And then we specify the node we want to write. Uh, this is some node I came up with. And I created this node actually in 2018 on the 4th of May. And let's say we wrote it at three o'clock and 30 minutes, zero seconds. And let's say at an offset of three hours. Okay, let's reformat that. Let's execute it. So I say execute on my mutation here. And then it's executed. And that's the first surprise I have. So it's the same date, but now it's uh, 12 the clock and we have this Z at the end. And the Z at the end means Zulu time. It's essentially UTC. So the time is converted to UTC. Surprising, but okay. Let's fetch the notes again. If I fetch the notes, I can suddenly see that it's actually 12 o'clock now and with an offset of two hours. That's very strange. Let's go into the code and explore that a bit. So first, I put already here a breakpoint into our mutation. And let's see what happens if I add a new node again. So let's just kill that. And then we start it in debug and we create another node. And we can already see my breakpoint is hit. And I can see that I have a daytime object. And that is a kind UTC. So we get a UTC object from our GraphQL engine. And that's fun because hot chocolate converts it to UTC. Internally, actually, we use daytime offset. So we could do daytime offset. And then down here, say we want to have the UTC daytime. That's essentially the same thing. So if I run that again, 
we hit the breakpoint again and if we look at this object now we can see that it's really one-to-one -one what i put in in graphql but date time is lacking this offset so date time can represent three kinds unspecified utc or local time what we did with it was converting it to UTC. But this is not necessarily bad. You can deal with UTC. Most people put UTC just in the database and be done with it. So you can use daytime offset if your database supports it, and then you get exactly uh, what we sent into GraphQL. But you also could decide that UTC is actually good here and you wanna keep UTC. But what if you wanted local time? So Hot Chocolate allows you to change that. And essentially these are defined by converters. So we could say that we add a new type converter here that converts from daytime offset to daytime. And then we could say, instead of using the UTC time, we could say we wanna have the local data, okay? And if we now debug that, and execute our mutation here, then we hit back our breakpoint and we can see that we now got the local time and we could save that to our database if that was what we wanted. So the default here would actually be UTC daytime. So that's the default. That's a default implementation that Hot Chocolate has internally. Okay, but there is still this other thing that when we read the data, and that is here, then we get this strange behavior. So let's debug that. But before I do that, let me just clear our database a bit so that we don't have any nodes in there. Let's say delete from nodes and then just run the query. Okay, our database is now cleaned. We are ensuring in our mutation actually that we get now a UTC day time, that's default implementation, but it's now we are sure of it, what it is now. And let's debug just where we get the date times from the database. For that, let's start our debugger. And let's go over here and refill it first with a new entry. So we get now a new item in the database. We can see here that it's our UTC date that is coming. Okay, let's run that. That's in. And then we're gonna fetch that. So I'm going to get now the notes again. We're hitting our breakpoint here. And let me grab that and put that in our debug view down here. Actually, because that's a query bill, we do list. Okay, we can see it has one item. And then we can also see that we have here our date, 12 o'clock. And if we expand that, we can see that it's unspecified. So in this case, we actually don't know what to do with the date time and it's converted to the local time. We don't know if it's UTC, if it's local or whatever. So it's, we don't know what to do with it, but we can change that in our configuration here and tell the hot chocolate graphical engine to actually handle that in a specific way that fits your project needs. It could be that it should be interpreted as a local date time or UTC date. So we do add type converter again, but this time we are converting from date time to date time offset. So essentially we are loading it as date time and the graphical engine in, the, in its scalar is only dealing with date time offset. So we are converting it back to the runtime type for the graphical engine. So the first thing we should do is check if it's actually unspecified because if it's not unspecified if it's local or utc we know what to do with it we know how to interpret it if this kind is unspecified let me just write that here then we want to specify the kind so we say daytime specify kind pass in the daytime object that we have here and then we say you are actually utc because that's what we put in the database in any other cases, just keep on using the daytime update. Okay, we just finished the debugger here. Let's restart. Awesome. So you could see that our last invoke returned 12 o'clock with an offset of two hours, which is my local time at the moment. If I execute that again, I hit the breakpoint again. And again, it should be unspecified because that's the raw database we get from the database. 
So you can see it's unspecified here. But then when we get it here, we can see that it's interpreted as Zulu time and that is UTC. So now it's correct. It's 12 o'clock, but with the correct offset. So let's recap that. If I execute now here my node, I get it at 12 o'clock UTC into the database. And when I reselect it, I now correctly get it as 12 o'clock UTC when I select it from the database. So every time you work with date time and databases, I recommend specifying the behavior in your GraphQL configuration, these two things. So we have people using local time in the database very consistently, or people that use UTC in their database. It's actually up to your business case, but always specify what you actually want. Otherwise, it's a bit up in the air. And with this, I'm done. This was a quick dive into date time and the pitfalls you could face it. So if you have strange behavior with date time, it might very well be this unspecified date that you load from the database. In general, try to preserve daytime offset. So if you're using daytime offset, you're always fine because you know what you got. But if you reduce the daytime offset that we have with GraphQL, with the GraphQL daytime scalar, then you always have to make sure that the daytime is in a state that you predicted. So make sure of that. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe and like button below our video and help us grow our project by heading over to GitHub and giving us a GitHub star. With this, I'm off. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.